Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. At our team summit last week, my fellow CDAs came through and hooked me up with some awesome new nerd shirts. So look for them on future episodes of TWC9. This week, I opted to wear some more ironic merch, this time featuring my favorite sure to be doomed movie ticket startup. All right, enough about unsustainable business models. Let's get into this week's dev news. First up, if you're going to go for con, no pun intended, there's a pre-conference workshop on Monday, August 27th about Cloud Native Go, led by Josh Gavant and Martin Strobel from the Azure Go team. Also, if you're at GopherCon, look out for some of our Go CDAs who will be all over the conference. And also prepare yourself for some Go-themed episodes of Azure Friday coming soon. In other conference news, we're like less than six weeks away from Microsoft Ignite, which will be in Orlando from September 24th through 29th. Now, historically, Ignite has focused a lot on IT professionals and operations experts, and that's still the case. But this year, there's even more developer-focused content than ever, with sessions on containers, AI, microservices, IoT, Node.js, and .NET. So register now to join us. I'll be there along with the Channel 9 crew, and we would love to see you. In some cool Cosmos DB news, the Azure Cosmos DB team has just announced that the release candidate for version 2.0 of the JavaScript SDK for SQL API is now in public preview. Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed multi-model database service, and it's fantastic at scaling at massive levels with almost non-existent latencies. And the SQL API supports JavaScript SDK uh, to enable developing against the Azure Cosmos DB uh, from JavaScript and Node.js projects. And the new version, it was rewritten entirely in TypeScript, and it has a new object model and other cool features. So check out the full details in a blog post written by Deborah Chin. Links are in the show notes. And in Azure App Service news, we've got a couple of highlights. First, Linux on Azure App Service environments is now generally available. And so this makes it possible to deploy a Linux or a containerized web app to an Azure virtual network by combining features from the app service on Linux and the app service environment. And so you can deploy your Linux web app in an Azure VNet by bringing a custom container. So that includes stuff from Docker Hub or the Azure Container Registry or your own solution or by using your code with one of the built-in images that support popular development stacks. Check out the show notes for a blog uh, link with a blog post with more information. Um, this is very cool news. And the other big piece of Azure App Service news is that Windows container support in Azure App Service is now in public preview. So this is ideal for developers who want to maybe modernize their existing apps by migrating their .NET or .NET Core code to Azure or for applications that might need some custom dependencies. And the preview is actually free uh, for the month of August and preview pricing will start on September 13th. So check out the show notes for links and more information because there are a couple of different pricing plans that you'll want to be aware of. On Channel 9 this week, be sure to check out the latest episode of Five Things, this time about CSS. Burke is joined by Amy Knight to share tips for working with everyone's favorite style sheet language. Over on Defrag Tools, the game geeks out over the command prompt, um, one of my favorite topics. And as someone who most frequently uses Bash or other Unixy shells, I learned a ton about command prompt stuff for Windows, so be sure to check out this episode. And rounding, rounding it out, on the latest episode of The Xamarin Show, James is joined by David Ortenau to talk about the new flex layout for Xamarin Forms. Links to all videos are in the show notes, so be sure to check it out. In some VS Code news, my friend and fellow CDA, Burke Holland, you know him from five things, recently published an article on CSS tricks highlighting some of the CDA team's favorite code extensions. And uh, spoiler alert, one of my favorite extensions is in the roundup. Please share some of your favorite code extensions in the comments because we would always love to know more about what your setup looks like. In some, I can't believe this is real life news, Microsoft has installed two webcams in our undersea data center. So you can literally watch fish swim by petabytes of storage deep under the Scottish coast. And honestly, the footage is strangely mesmerizing. Uh, you can check out the live feeds and get more information about the data center project in the show notes. Um, honestly, this is like my, my, my desktop background now. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Longtime viewers of this show know that I love it when people nerd out using Excel. 
whether it's making art or animations or simply pressing the space bar for hours straight to get to the bottom of the spreadsheet, Excel people are my people. And uh, earlier this month, uh, Certiport crowned its annual World Excel Champion at the Microsoft Office Specialist Wor uh, World Championship in Orlando. The winner was 15-year-old Kevin DeMaculingen. And to me, the most impressive thing about Kevin's win is that he only picked up Excel as a hobby last year, and yet he still managed to edge out like 760,000 competitors. So congrats, Kevin, and uh, good luck on your world domination with Excel. That does it for me. Let me know your favorite VS Code extensions in the comments. And if you like the show, go ahead and give the video a like. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that you can get even more developer news. See you next week.